Hey guys, if you're like me, you take a lot of pictures, you shoot a lot of video on your phone. This stuff just keeps gathering and gathering and gathering and gathering. If you're part of a ministry team and part of a church staff, then you know this group of photos, this group of video on everybody's phones just keeps gathering and gathering and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, how, how in the world are you going to get all this stuff wrangled together so that everybody can have access to it? Well, you're going to do it using Google Photos. That's what today's pro tip is, something that I've been using for a long time that I love. Google Photos is totally free. It's part of your Google account. So if you got a Gmail account, you've already got a Google Photos account. If you have a G Suite account, you know, for like your team or something, then you've got a Google Photos account. And uh, if you pay like 10 bucks a month, then you get like a terabyte of storage for it. So it's totally cool, totally awesome. And I want to show you guys how I'm using it. Okay, first things first, I want to show you guys just how easy it is to get photos into Google Photos. So if you are on your phone and you launch Google Photos, which you can download in the App Store, then you can see here's a whole bunch of photos that I have. Now, one of the things that I want to show you is that you can go into your menu and you can set this thing up about how to gather up your photos, okay? You can tell it what folders on your device to make sure that it adds, okay? You can set it up to automatically add fo photos from those folders. So any graphic files that are in those folders are gonna get added automatically. Okay, now these are some photos that I've took uh, over the weekend, uh, several different photos. I was at my aunt and uncle's house, and so I was scanning some old photos, old snapshots and such. So after I started getting all these in here, as soon as I got onto Wi-Fi, it did a backup, and you can see right up here at the top, it says backup complete, which tells me that these files have been moved onto my Google Photos account. So if you take a look here, you can see here's all those files. So I've got them on my phone and I've got them on my Google Photos account at photos.google.com. Now, one thing I can do is I can free up some space, which will basically delete them from the device here, from my phone, freeing up some of my memory on the phone. So if I just do that and free up 2.42 gigs, it's gonna go through and delete all those. And once that's done, I will have recovered about two and a half gigs worth of storage space. Now, if I click on one of these photos, what will happen is it will download it back onto the memory and it'll start adding it back up. But for now, all I need to do is see that these photos are there. And if I need to do something with them, I can grab one. Otherwise, I know they're nice and safe and up on my Google Photos account. Now, once I'm up here in Google Photos, I can do all kinds of great stuff. This one right here, I'll just show you a quick way that we can clean this up a little bit. If you click on the file and then click on the edit button, you can do some basic stuff, apply some filters, you know, think of them like Instagram filters. Uh, you can hit auto and it's gonna automatically white balance. Uh, I'm gonna kind of leave it there at original. First thing I wanna do actually is I wanna crop. So I'm gonna crop out the white border from this. And there we go. And once I have it set, all I have to do is hit done and the crop happens. now. By the way, when you're cropping, you can also do things like straighten it out. So if it was like crooked or something, you could do that as well. In my case, I won't do that. I will just simply add my crop. Now you'll notice that this is non-destructive. So when I hit done, okay, if I hit undo edits, it all goes back the same, okay? So now let me get back over here and crop it again. But what that tells me is that uh, any changes that I make to these can be undone, which is great. So I'm not actually ruining my one copy of this one uh, photo that we found in a box at my aunt's house. I can also go in and change some of the coloring. So I can click on the edit button there and then hit the light drop down and I can adjust overall, right? Or I can come in here and like say with the exposure, I can bring the exposure up increase the contrast or decrease the contrast, bring down some of the highlights or increase the highlights, pick up the shadows, kind of lighten everything or darken the shadows. Okay, I can brighten up my whites or pull them down a little bit. I can increase the richness of my blacks, kind of crush them down if I need to, or I can pull them out if I want to pull out some more detail. I can add a vignette if I want. Now, this is an old photo, so I don't want to add a vignette. Now. This was a kind of a black and white film, sepia tone type image. So I actually kind of want to get rid of the actual color cast that's kind of gotten on there over the years. And if I want to pop it, increase the structure, that's what that is. I can do that a little bit. Kind of does a little bit of sharpening 
uh, in the contrast. So anyway, let's say I'm happy with that. I can hit done. And now there is my edited photo. Now, one of the things that's really neat about Google Photos is that you have albums. Albums are awesome. They are collections of photos based on certain characteristics. Now, one of the things that's awesome is that Google will automatically go through and gather things up for you, okay? So people and pets, let's just take a look at this. This is one that they made. So Google knows that, in this case, the four of us have Gmail accounts. So it said, oh, there's Catherine. So you have this face showing up a lot. This is Catherine Curley. And so we're going to gather everything with her. And here's Jaina, here's Jillian, and here's Dave Curley. And we're going to gather all the photos that have these people in them. So if we just go to the category, people and pets, then, and yes, it does recognize pets, which is amazing. So if I take a look in here, it has identified people that show up a lot. Now, me and Jillian and Kat, it knows. Jaina, it knows. Luria, it knows. Mark Jokel, it knows. So if I click on Mark, it's going to go and gather up all the photos that have Mark in them. So here we go. So I can add his name right there. Mark Jokel. There's a gallery, a, an album. This has all the stuff that I have labeled uh, that have Mark in them. Here is just a bunch of stuff that it has found with Mark's image in it. So if I want to find a picture of Mark Jokel, I can search by his face. Let's go try someone else. Here's my grandmother, 97-year-old grandmother. Lola Curley. Now, she doesn't have a Gmail account, which is fine. She's 97. She doesn't need one. All right, but what it's done is it's gone through the albums that I have that have her in it. It says, okay, she shows up in these albums, okay, including a family history album that has a whole bunch of old photos and such. And now it will go through and it will find her. Now, here's her 25, 30 years ago. Here she is right there. Um, she's actually not in this, but there are some characteristics in here. Uh, this is actually her mother's family. So it's not perfect, but it found something in maybe her mother's face that it thought was similar to hers. So, you know, that's all right. Uh, let's see here. It found her in an image. It found her here. It found me with her. It found her when she was young. That's huge. This is her back in 1937. Okay, so it was able to find that this is a young version of Lola as well as this is an old version. It's really cool. The facial recognition is really good. This can be very helpful when you're looking for a specific person in, say, the youth group. Uh, and yes, it does do pets. I mentioned that earlier. It does do pets. So it found my daughter's service dog here. It found our other dog. And what it'll do is it's able to pick out the... the <laughs> it even picked up him from, <laughs> from this... Angle that's not so good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, let's see here. Now, you can also make albums, which is great. So, you know, I um, I made an album. Let's see. Here's my church media album. So I made an album for church media. And when I go through and take a whole bunch of different pictures that I want to use maybe um, for, you know, various promotional things, uh, examples, things like that, for our training, for what have you, then I dump them in here. So anything having to do with church media or production or anything like that, I drop in here. So now I have a repository that I can go and get access to anything that I need for any given project, which you know is very helpful. Now, one of the things you can do is you can share. So I can share this album with, like in this case, I shared it with my Dave at churchtrainingacademy.com account. I can invite other people. So let me go ahead and just invite Justin because Justin's not invited in here. Invite Invited? So Justin Nava at churchtrainingacademy.com. And there you go. He will now have access to the, the folder for church media, which means he can grab now images that he wants to put in, say, one of our blog posts or in some training or something as an example. To add something to an album is really easy. If we go back over to photos, and I'm going to scroll down to some of that Mark Jokel stuff. Okay, so here are some video clips that are from a show that I did last week. Some shots that I did last week on the Mark Jokel show. Here is his video. 
And there's me and Seth Muse. That's not Mark. But let's scroll down here. Here's a few other things. These are from uh, one of the shows that we did. Let's say that this is exactly the ones that I want to add to that folder. I can then click on Add and hit Album. And then I can either create a new album or scroll through my list of albums and add it to it. So I'll add it to the Mark Jokel Show Gallery. And then when I go to Albums and I go to Mark Jokel Show Gallery, there will be all the images. And these are, these are time stamps. So the most recent ones are going to be at the bottom. Here's the things that were uh, mid last week that we shot. See? Really cool. And that, by the way, that's videos and images, which, again, is very helpful. What's cool is that you can basically upload anything to this. So a couple of different ways to upload. You can go to Photos, and then you can hit the Upload. Okay, that's fine. That's dandy. Okay, you can also... Here is a, here's a, a shot that I took with... I'm trying to think. Did I do it with my, with my phone? I think I did do it with my phone. So it's probably already in there, but let's say it wasn't. So here's a photo that I could just take. I could drag and drop it. You'll see, drop files anywhere to upload, and that will upload it. Another way is if I wanted to go straight to the album, I could go to my, where'd it go? Church Media Album. So I can go straight to the album and then drop it in, and it's going to automatically add it to Church Media. Now, it'll show up, of course, in photo. See, one item uploaded. Great. And it'll show up in the photos folder as well. Now, I just don't, I don't remember what the date was. It's not going to be up here at the very top. Uh, let me see if I can grab the date real quick just to sh show you that it is there. Uh, July 16th, 2017. Uh, let's see, 2017. There we go. There's the photos. Yeah, see, it was already in there. Anyway, but that's how you upload stuff. Now, what's cool is you can upload any size of files, right? You can't do like raw files, but you can do like JPEGs and PNGs and BMPs and stuff like that. And you can go to a folder and you can just basically select all the ones in that folder and drag them and drop them and they're going to start uploading, okay? If you have Google Drive um, installed, that Google Drive app, you can also have your Google Photos folder available to you there. So let's go to Google Drive. And then here's all the different folders from my Google Drive account. And if I go to Google Photos, there they are. Guys, this is all synced here locally. So I could actually, you know, take this folder and like add it to my Carbonite or CrashPlan or sync it over to a Dropbox folder or something like that and really, really have backups of backups. You see what I'm saying? So there you go. Google Photos. Totally cool. Totally free. Okay. Or pay for it and get a lot of storage. Either way, the tools are there that you can use. It's fantastic. I love it. I can't recommend it enough. Go start using Google Photos.